Hi everyone, uh, thank you for taking out time for joining this uh, session where we discuss how we can sustain through the pandemic and focus on uh, you know emerging strategies to win on work virtually. So I'll go by Chakrada Sri Parambadur, but with a last name in the US, I always go with a Swami as my middle name and the cute and the prettiest name. So I work for uh, Infomerica. Infomerica is an IT services company which do end-to-end -end business problems we solve using the technology. And we are a global company based out of the US, Europe, and India. And I lead as a CBOBO and CIO. My name is Charulata, and I have the privilege of leading marketing operations at Accenture, uh, based out of India and working for the global markets. Um, and I'm also a columnist, and I'm absolutely excited about anything that's new and innovation and transformation. So that's what keeps me ticking every day. Thank you. Hi, everyone. I'm uh, Chulanga Pereira. I work as the CIO for Daimler India Commercial Vehicles, which is the um, brand of the group company Daimler AG, uh, which produces trucks, buses, cars, vans, and we also provide uh, mobility services. So I take care of the India business uh, uh, in terms of connectivity, uh, all IT related infrastructure operations, uh, as well as digitalization and digital transformation. My first question is to uh, Swami. Uh, Swami, we all of us are adapting to the new normal, which is working from home. We have seen so many sales moving to a completely online mode. Uh, the field uh, sales force is now no more on the ground and they are trying to work with a lot of inside sales teams. There's no differentiation between field sales versus, uh, you know, the the uh, inside sales team which supports them. Uh, you know, so how do you think that companies uh, are coping up with this new normal? And uh, do you think that companies will make this, uh, you know, work from home, uh, you know, uh, permanent or uh, make this a long term uh, path as we move forward, given this is the new working style? Yeah, so uh, this is an uh, interesting times. First of all, I hope everyone is staying safe and healthy in this pandemic. And uh, even though last few years, everybody is working towards the digital transformation, but because of this pandemic, you know, people have become more and more uh, out of the force. They all have to adopt. But if you really look at it, you know, digital technology has really transformed the consumer and an employee habits. See, uh, we are a global company. Within a time when we heard about this pandemic, our employees have all come across um, into the working. And then when we are looking at from the US and the Europe, things were a little bit easier, but I have a lot of uh, people in India and they are all stuck in the rural area. So it was uh, taken a little longer when there was not much infrastructure in the rural areas. But when you look at it from the customer side, now a customer is getting uh, a different experience because now all this digital transformation is all working about how best we can give a customer experience. And this is in fact uh, going not only how the people were doing uh, previously contacting the customer, but now it is giving a more and more appeal because now you have the VR, you have the AR, a lot of the different technologies you can use and give them a, a beautiful experience following the agile process. Previously, you really need to wait and also distance wa used to be a problem and then people have to travel because we always believe in the face-to-face -face meetings. But now here, people are available and you can easily get either your employee or a customer on a conference call and do a product demo. So it is giving a much more different experience and what we all are focusing towards is giving a best-in-class customer experience. So I would say it is going to be more new normal as we always call and the people are being adaptive so if you look at it from march to may in the pandemic people have been understanding what is this virus how we really want to go but i think by the time may and june people have uh, realized we have to live with it when you realize the live with it the mindset have completely changed and people are working towards enabling this technology from the employee and the customer perspective. Great Swami, so you're saying virtual selling is here to stay for a longer run. Uh, absolutely, absolutely. And in fact, uh, uh, one of the thing is, I now have more sales people in US because we are focusing on the US customers. But now I don't think uh, location matters. Now people can be there more in the interest of 
what is your passion and how best we can sell it to wherever the customer is and our sales people can be now uh, anywhere in the world the, the people from hyderabad can talk to people in russia or people in russia can speak to people in us because it doesn't matter where you are as long as you are focusing on what is the product and the passion and how are you solving the business problems and giving a best in class customer experience great so what could be some of the new methods which could be adopted to sell customers in the online world should we prefer prefer making telephonic calls or do video conferencing um i think it'll, it's always going to be a combination right and it may not be restricted to just these two methods um there's video there's voice there is uh, there's going to be a lot of other methods like whatsapps and uh, you know texting and all of that's going to come into play right it's not going to be restricted to this at all uh, and it's going to be a combination and i think uh, what people were doing earlier was experimenting with all this right and i come from a part of the world which is deeply into digital marketing and marketing operations so we've actually been adopting many of these platforms much earlier on so you know it's it's definitely a trend that i would um encourage everybody to look at beyond just voice and beyond just video because that's the way it's going to be and not everyone's in the same level of digital maturity in the world right because it's it's not the same everywhere some are more mature as consumers and customers uh, some are not so much and some have relied on traditional methods for a long time and uh, I, i think it's it's very quickly people are adapting but as they're adapting i think we've got to kind of enable that process much faster and get everyone as much as possible into these platforms and and take them one step at a time right i mean you can't start putting video conferencing into a a group of buyers who is going to be more relying on on texts right or on voice and and like uh, swami was suggesting i mean in the rural areas in the and this is not just india i'm talking about even globally it's it's wrong to assume that in the global markets everybody is on to video platforms it's not the case and i think it's horses for courses it is here to stay in terms of non traditional methods of selling and non traditional methods of collaboration and and marketing and uh, they will come in different uh, mixes and in different proportions great how do you build trust in the virtual world we have seen that you know unless we meet somebody physically uh you know have the conversations it's difficult to trust people but you know selling virtual is a new reality so how do you build trust in the virtual world you know is it possible that we build up similar level of trust when we interact with people virtually see um i, I think it depends on it too. i'll i'll take it case by case um can you build trust yes um should the human element come into play then that is also an yes for instance there are certain businesses that you can have digital marketing and and sell products digitally but then there are also businesses for example ours uh, we can never sell a truck or a bus without somebody having to test drive it i can create all the simulators and they can do this and they can customize their vehicles or cars or vans or buses but they would want to get the real feel and you will never build trust with the product if you don't have a touch and feel to it what i do believe will happen in the future is that the work modes or efficiencies will increase yeah everybody talks about a new normal uh, i think the fact that we can work from anywhere Uh, when we were forced to have made businesses realize that this can increase the efficiency R- right now people who are out of the workforce for example can come into the workforce right people who wanted to work part time who could not relocate with families they are all in the picture which means we'll become more efficient it will be more app based um, just like swami and and uh, chawlata mentioned earlier i think depending on the maturity of not just the organization but the industry also you might find uh, things becoming a lot easier to sell um but what will enable the trust factor is if we bring in authentication or if we bring in authenticity to the apps that we put out there what i talk about is do we govern the data are we able to ensure that certain amount of security and privacy is maintained uh, i can use a perfect example for example um when our sales people go to meet a customer we have an app uh, and if the, within the app the customer before the sales rep comes in is able to even track the past 14 days temperature check now uh, to make sure that the person who's coming is tested following the sh- social distancing norms now this might of course end after a vaccine is out but we have to come up with creative ways to build trust so that one you can start selling and then enable the people who are selling with the right tools and equipment to ensure that the the customers fully satisf- satisfied with the product he or she is buying so i think um we can get closer to building the trust uh, and i think it will take a lot longer before we actually start trusting the digital world in the same manner as the physical interaction that you would normally have on a day to day basis
what I was saying is that trust is a very, very critical factor and you cannot really measure it. There is no real measurement. But then it is all about the feelings. And when I am talking about an CXO level, talking to my thousand plus people around the globe, how do they really trust me, what I'm saying as a leader? How do I trust my employees, whether they are working? Because most of the times in many geographic regions, working from home is not a normal. But then as a manager, when I'm telling my person to work for eight hours, how do I trust? And how those do people, because the accounts and the finance say that, they never had this working from home or remote. Their people say that uh, I'm paying them like you know, 10 hours of job, but then I don't think they are getting. So as a leader, I think what I have seen in my personal thing is the honesty and the open communication is very, very important because previously we seek more and more authentic conversation at the water coolers. Now you cannot go to the water coolers because there's no physical people. Now, how do I bring that to the atmosphere? So that is where usually what I am adopting is when I'm having a, a leadership conference, I'm asking them more about their family, more about what they're going on. We really need to say that we are vulnerable. We are not always you know, perfect. We always go through as a leader some problems. We were always good to say that I don't know if I don't know. So we need to really build that the way how you are working. The kindness, honesty, and open communication is very, very critical factors which you need to adapt and we need to percolate in the organization because your direct reports may have a lot of the direct reports along the chain. So you need to process through the food chain these three qualities to make sure it is good. So, Swami, I'm fully with you on the three things, but there's two other things which I, I also was going to touch upon. One is data backed on facts, okay. right? Customers are now more and more accustomed to at least what we see is they want to believe facts. We are collecting an ample amount of data and businesses will need to start thinking about how do you make sure that the customers understand. For example, I'll take our industry. We play a game of TCO, which is total cost of ownership. Or we, we talk about fuel efficiency, right? Our vehicles are connected and we can show results through data, which shows the maturity of our products, the quality levels, the standards that we follow, the certificates we have. And this builds a certain level of trust on top of what you said. No? Uh, are you able to be honest and, and communicate openly with your customers? So I think the, the whole equation goes more towards the uh, data driven sort of organization where you are able to back them with facts. Absolutely. I think I echo that completely. You said what I was going to say from a product point of view, and I was going to actually cover it as um, there's, there are two levels of trust, right? One is the trust in the product, which I completely agree is, is data and fact based and performance based. Right. What a mouth is so important. And all of us who are going to be on social media, right? Everybody's on social media, putting things out in terms of what I trust and what I don't. And I trust people much more than and than what the brand says, right? I trust data much more than what advertising says, for example, right? Everything has to be backed by that. That's at the product level. And if it performs, nothing like it. Uh, whether it's it's a physical product or a service product, it has to perform, right? So Trust is about what it does, not what it says anymore, right? And that's important. Earlier, what it said could take you for some time, but today it won't take you even a day. It has to be based on those data and facts. The other is on people, right? What Swami was referring to. To me, it's not about do people trust me as a leader? I think do we trust our people? That's an important aspect today because everyone is now you know, pretty much everybody's working from home across the world. And we have to depend on our people to take judgment calls, to, to be responsible, uh, you know, and, and we can't we can't be doubting them. We don't we shouldn't doubt them. Our people are responsible, right? If we place that trust in them, and I've seen it, when we place that responsibility and trust in them, it just absolutely works wonders. And that's the trust I think which is more important than that. And that's how they will trust you as well in return. And just the statistics wise, I think the companies which have adopted and performing with trust are more than 70% high in revenues in the trajectory compared to other people. And the, to your point, Charlotte, I think we need to give them empowerment, the people and trust them and then things will happen. So that's good. Kanishka, I think you motivated everybody to bring in or chime in on the trust factor. <laughs> yes. And I have some data points to add, uh, you know, based on the research, uh, it is being confirm that people reveal more about themselves virtually when they do it in, otherwise when they do it in person. So when you have people interacting digitally or on phone calls or on chat, they will give you so much amount of information, which if you meet them in real life, they will never share. Now, this also brings an element. Of how do we safeguard ourselves from aspects such as social engineering uh, aspects such as uh, people, uh, you know, giving us uh, 
attempts to hack into our systems people uh, you know trying spear phishing or phishing attempts so how, how how do you how do you safeguard that's also an important aspect i i want to get your thoughts upon so the cyber security is very very critical one of the important uh, aspect uh, especially in the pandemic what we have done is we are giving them more and more trainings and bringing some awareness programs to all the employees because there is a two aspects of it one now people are working remotely so we did really don't know how strong their networks are how secure their networks are so we as a company are giving them the awareness because most of the problems because i work with a lot of the cyber security in the us government on different projects we have been interacting and we are exchanging the information now most of the are 80% are above the problem is user because most of the people just open this laptop and then go they don't even do the lock and now when you are working from home you have your family your kids and everybody will come it is not that they really want to do intentionally but because the kids and all may play and then you have to know about the basics who you are really talking to especially everything is there in the social media who really are you doing a basic check a person is invite sending you an invitation are you doing a basic check to whether to accept or not how much information can you give the another critical factor is you are working with multiple customers now there is a lot of customer data how are you protecting the customer data because there is a lot of the ip we are working because we have a trust between us as a service provider and a customer so how are you managing the trust so there is a lot of awareness programs goes on on a continuous basis now that has been increased more because of this pandemic and as a technology and the, our um, internal security team we have enabled the technology to see your dual factor authentication and then also making sure you have a vpn tunneling in so we have been doing but most important thing is education and the training which has to go on a continuous basis because the technology is evolving a lot of the mediums are evolving so how do you really reach out to that so that is what we are doing and we have been successfully uh, working on because we are working on some of the very uh, um, secret projects battle projects so we have to be very very clear about what we do how we do and then who we engage and we also engage in our background process of each and every employee who are going to be on the customer on this uh, so some of the works we are doing on healthcare because a lot of the people are working on how are we going to get a medication or the vaccine because everybody in this new normal one thing everybody is waiting is the medication so if i am able to help my customers to get it without having any of these issues so that we can easily get the medication and then people will be better normal sure now charulata my next question is to you you know we have been conducting meetings in the physical world and now we have to conduct more virtual meetings right uh, where we have to win new customers uh, how should we conduct these meetings should we keep our meeting small uh, should these be one to one or should we have larger groups uh, communicating uh, what could be some of the best practices uh <laughs> best practices i think are yet to be established right we are all new to this at this point and well seven months down the line uh, not that new also but i i would say again that you know different meetings uh, will determine the size of the audience firstly so i don't think it is size led if it's a team meeting it's going to be large if it's a uh, very crucial small group meetings and things like that so that the size is determined by the nature of what we are discussing but i think how to conduct these meetings i think there is a pre meeting which is very very important to get organized before coming into these virtual meetings of 30 minutes right and and i think um reasonably people seem to be doing a pretty good job of that right? as far as uh, the meetings that i have been uh, part of so i think the pre meeting and the pre um um thinking that we need to do before coming to meetings right and to uh, directly address the point about long and short meetings i think short meetings are better in my opinion what you can achieve in 30 minute meetings you will not achieve you will see that after 30 minutes either the in, you know the attention wavers or you are prolonging the decision right so when you know that just 30 minutes and you have very clear cut agenda and you know what you need to be deciding on the decisions come much faster and if you have the right audience there so all of this homework needs to be done before getting into these 30 minute meetings right uh, and i think if we can also assign responsibilities very quickly to who takes the decision on what who brings in the inputs and the data who who acts as the timekeeper who acts as the uh, you know the person who uh, um, uh, kind of provokes some deeper thinking before taking the decision these roles need to be assigned very well as well right um, so th those are some of the elements to look at and we should ensure that meetings have a diverse set of people 
uh, and not people who are completely close to the problem because when you're too close to the problem you're kind of going around in circles a little bit so it's always good to have those one or two people who are a little distance from the problem to be able to take much faster decisions and evaluate all aspects of it so those are some of the principles around it and uh, of course i mean there are again some very critical areas where you don't need to decide in that 30 minutes right you do have to uh, um, take them across through uh, multiple meetings as well but each one should be determined with a very clear agenda um so that that's i think important and and minuting what's been uh, discussed the some of the traditional methods are still important as well whatever charulata said is all good but what i found physically i mean personally is having a small meetings with a video on is helping because on the teleconference all people are multitasking and then always you say okay can you repeat again what did you say can you repeat again it's always the norm but when you are having a video call we can make sure that people are really focusing and some of the body movements are also important you know whether it is a customer or an employee how their physical appearance and how are they reacting to the discussion what we are having is very critical because in physical face to face meetings we always take our gut feeling whether it is a closed sale or open sale or as an issue with the body movements and that's video conferencing at least we are able to do that rather than the teleconferencing just a couple of those things we observed and it is working well i share pretty much the same sentiments but what i've also realized is um, a lot of the things that were not possible in physical meetings are now becoming more and more Uh, easier right um i i had never been able to take calls before so um and i think um those are certain things that uh, i think we were able to accomplish during these uh, you know video conferences as well as these online platforms that we are using for day to day communication it's easier said than done for a lot of people right it's not easy to not everybody has done a lot of public speaking it's not easy to just turn on the camera and start talking um uh, people uh, people haven't been um Uh, you know coach to do things like that not everybody has had to do it that technical people uh, you know who don't necessarily need to do that but now everyone's having to come onto the camera and say things so uh, i would sometimes be a little forgiving towards those who don't necessarily want to switch the camera on because they are they're very good with their subject matter they're very good at what they're thinking and that's why you know we need them in the team and if they are a little shy of being on the camera i'm fine with that for some time but i think we also need to support everyone in our team to learn that craft right it's very important it's it's no longer a marketing domain to come in front of a camera and start speaking it is important for everyone to build that confidence to build the uh, the skill of speaking uh, to so many people at the same time knowing that on these things you can raise your hand when you need to say something you don't really cut into people's conversations there are multiple things to it and i think those need um uh, some kind of you know uh, learning and and uh, that's not impossible uh, people can get there and we just have to be patient with some people who get there a little later than some others you know you would have seen uh, your field uh, sales force move online doing online demos uh, you know helping clients make right choices uh, now as we move back to the uh, you know uh, to the new normal we have seen that uh, physical interactions and physical meetings are going to happen now so you know how do you how do you create that fine balance between online versus offline selling you know you think that technology will act as a savior in the long run absolutely uh, i think my my honest opinion is that there is no two words to it and you cannot back down from where you are now um the the question is who's going to find the right balance and in what context right uh, what i mean by that is i spoke about data earlier uh, a lot of the times our, our sales uh is backed heavily by the data that we produce um and and also because the global reach is becoming more and more prominent now uh when you look at suppliers when you look at your customers when you look at even internal customers sometimes when you have cross functional teams across borders na so um what is it that you take to the customer and how frequently can you visit them for example uh you can't go and visit your customer or you can't have, build that relationship if you are not able to travel let's say from chennai to mumbai once a week Uh, but if you want to keep in close contact and you want to manage your key customers then virtually you can back this na enable this you can share certain reports you can have apps that are developed for communication you can build apps that can collect feedback where you don't have to physically go and ask about a certain product requirements but they can provide this directly to the headquarters or or directly to the you know to to the manufacturer so um i think in the future um if you look at for example even amazon they've been doing this for a while now right the first thing i do when i order something is i go through the reviews any person can come and tell me how good a product is but i trust the ratings that are there 
uh, that, that's how I, I shortlist my products, right? So I, I think in the future, it will become very important for us to find that right balance, but also it, uh, it will again depend on the industry. Uh, um, and and uh, that is where I think this uh, adjustment needs to be made and people who are first movers will always have an advantage. Sure, and I know I'll bring in uh, Charu here. Charu, you're a marketing expert, you're saying that uh, e-word of mouth will hold much more significance than word of mouth when you're making choices. I don't know what e-word of mouth will define right in future. E-word of, e of mouth, let me define. E-word of mouth is... Uh, what the customer feedback is going to be online, what other people are talking about. So yeah, for example, if you're saying, right? we're thinking of e word of mouth as the customer reviews typically that come online along with product descriptions and, you know, on e-commerce sites and all of that. We shouldn't ignore social media, right? That's also part of e word of mouth in a way, right? I mean, anything okay. which is really going digital as a word of mouth is going to have a huge impact, right? Um, and does that mean, I mean, we're talking to people also a lot more, right? These kind of calls. When I'm talking to my my friends and birthday parties now with amongst friends are on Zoom calls and uh, Teams calls and all that, right? So now when that happens and you talk about things or you you know you put things up on Facebook or you put things up on uh, you know on your WhatsApp and you you send images across before I buy something, I'm actually putting my images across to a whole bunch of people in different groups and asking, you know, is this good? It's not. So it's definitely. Um, I, w I would still just call it word of mouth in a, in a way, uh, whether it goes e-word of mouth, tele-word of mouth, or, or social media word of mouth, or whichever way, or comments and, and customer reviews that come online. And uh, even even for me, right, I mean, recently I was going to buy a, some, uh, there was a um, direct selling uh, group that came to me and did a demo at home. It was fantastic and all of that. And I said, look, I'm not going to invest in it. It was a huge investment as I'm not going to buy it till I see the reviews. When I went into the reviews, they were pretty poor. And when I spoke to the person who called me up, the person said, oh, you know, these were employees who left us and they put these reviews. I said, no, this is important, right? There are too many reviews which are repetitive. And I know there is an issue with your after sales, right? And the big focus, I think, now also has to be after sales. We're all consuming a lot through e-commerce, right? And and huge investments, you would still do more, uh, you know, like you for, for an automobile, you would do a test drive and all of that. And you would get home demos for large equipments. But otherwise, if I'm buying things and my after sales is poor, that is important to me. Because I think many organizations feel e-commerce means delivery and that's where the responsibility stops. And it's not. It is post that which matters a lot to me. And I will talk about it as a consumer, right? I'm not just a market. I'm a consumer first, in fact, right? And, and uh, I'd, be, I'd be very conscious of that. So it is definitely going to be important. And um, my comments to, to products and consumer comments to products are going to have a lot of weightage. And uh, I think uh, organizations and brands need to focus on that. They need to focus on their online reputation management very, very well and be truthful about it, right? Yeah. It's not good enough to have 10 posts from friends and people saying it's great. That will get called out at some point. Um, this is important to be transparent and, and really look for and also address, um, you know, the consumers, some consumers, if I put up a post as a consumer talking about my poor experience, you can't shove it under the carpet. You've got to address it because that multiplies hugely through social media. So I would say all organizations must address the negative comments equally as they would take their positive ones. Sure. Uh, my next question is, uh, again, uh, to Swami, that, you know, what could be certain out of box strategies which could be built to sustain business during COVID? Oh, actually, I would say the innovation is quadrupled in the pandemic because especially in the U.S., we never imagined to uh, order my own home, the produce. Now, I am just calling or going into the online and ordering all the retail stores. They have a curbside pickup. So I can ask my kids to go and pick it up because we have all the list of the items we are ordering. Now, if you think from the corporate perspective, the complete way of uh, uh, looking at the consumer and also the product is completely different. See, for example, we came up with a product uh, which was there five years ago called a MapRecruit, a cognitive talent acquisition platform. So what is happening is 
most of the time today the recruiters are really focusing on looking at all the spreadsheets and then they are having a final resumes how they go about it but now with this innovation now you are also having people across the globe so this is completely changing the way how you really look at it, the job seekers we have now technologies to match and then you only can bring all the people around the globe to see you can have a video interviews now you can do a group interviews and also if you really like a person you can do an interview then why do you want your manager also to do the interview when you already have the recording because you are asking the same question so why you want the person to take more responsibility to say it again and then we have also gone in one customer we have created a vr a person we are working on a product before it goes to really into the public if it is the mvp how i can really see as a consumer if i put a glasses how do i really feel it so i think the innovation is completely changing the world right and i think the other aspect is how do we uh, manage our workforce uh, during the pandemic right uh, you know because a new concept is coming up uh, which we have been talking about for a long time something called as digital culture right as uh, you know uh, you you spoke about now uh, the the location doesn't really matter it's how you can collaborate it's how effectively you can work in teams so how do we how do we adapt our teams to sustain this digital culture in the longer run you know very important part of it is uh, collaboration as a process right um we shouldn't take collaboration for granted and just keep you know uh, in organizations in the past it was all about you must collaborate with people and you must connect with people it was more a, it was more a, a, a culture today it should be a culture and a process i think collaboration is structured collaboration is um, um partly intuitive partly also it has to have a certain uh, approach to it right and to get the best out of it to make it most optimized and efficient right um and make and ensure that the collaborative uh, network is also highly innovative right and these are things we must ensure the collaboration output uh, delivers to and not just people coming together in a cacophony of uh, of uh, words and, and meetings in these calls right uh, so that's one the second is i think um, we need to be very very uh, impact client business driven in in our case and uh, our uh, in all everybody else's cases uh, organizations must be very output driven very business impact driven and uh, customer experience driven right it's very important to to ensure there are metrics in place for all this is my customer happy can i get adequate feedback around it uh, can i create a formal process around this to periodically tell me how they're doing and how we are doing for them all of this is part of um, this new way of working and sharing that information uh, across the team so that there is more ownership right the second area i think which is very important is uh, apart from making the entire thing measurable is also our people's wellness right um it has never been more important than now to focus on not just the productivity of people that is there and you know you trust them they will do it are they are they well are they doing all right right it's very hard to tell in these video calls because everybody will uh, would not nobody wants to bring uh, um well i can't say nobody but a lot of people don't want to bring their personal problems into professional lives right we've got to be able to see through that and ensure our people are doing well that wellness aspect is important and we need to really increase our support to our people uh, to ensure um, they are comfortable uh they are supported by the organization uh their problems are taken care of they are heard uh, and we have a system where they can engage with people outside of the groups working groups that they are in so that they can get uh you know um uh, listeners and people who can solve their problems and not have to look at the the process of of delivering to the business right so these should be very important aspects of how our workforce comes together um also in terms of um uh staying connected with people right how do you enable a process which is not just work collaboration but staying connected with each other like you know um we were talking about those uh, coffee breaks and water breaks that we take that's how do you make that happen in this virtual world right how do you ensure there is a there's a moment that everybody can get away from their work and connect with each other uh, at different levels and bringing in uh, communities of practice that we should share so for example you know if there's a group of photographers in the group a group of uh, writers in the group or whatever bring these communities together to be able to interact with each other and find their own uh, network and and interest uh, groups right um and uh, sharing knowledge that's the other thing how do you enable this group to come together to also share knowledge 
from uh, you know from across the organizations i might be interested in uh, knowing more about <clears throat> e-commerce i might be interested in knowing more about uh, the financial uh, side of the business i might be interested in knowing more about technology right so how do you enable and cross skill people in this new world of uh, collaboration thanks you know i think innovation is key to sustain business and as we talk about future of work innovation plays a very vital role so how do companies innovate while uh, you know employees are working from home you know what would be some of the key areas that can be taken into consideration or what could be the new practices that could be taken into account so i think um innovation comes in hand or goes hand in hand with collaboration uh, um and and when you see that collaboration becomes stagnant especially when you're working from home and i think the other two panelists na uh, swami and ancharulata mentioned this quite well but uh, if i take a tangent off of that you will realize that long term sustenance wise uh, completely working virtually is not going to help organizations right uh, i i can at the moment because of necessity call a doctor and get an e prescription but i i can't get an operation done uh, and i can't start inventing or start diagnosing things uh, if i am far away so when you look at uh, even one and a half two years ago the normal trend was to encourage more work from home however because there was not a dire need we did not switch to that now we have realized that we can still be efficient but can we be sustainable i honestly feel not and if you cannot be sustainable then innovation becomes stagnant so you can create a certain level of innovation but when you are not together and when you don't bring in different minds together to the same room to experiment to try things out it becomes very difficult and i'll only talk about automotive that's the industry i come from for us to innovate we we really need to go through certain quality checks we need to simulate a lot of things we need a lot of different people but what has happened is innovation has become a lot easier in terms of collaboration because now we can get insights from our colleagues sitting in germany in japan because there are tools yeah uh, that is more idea sharing but for innovation and technology to really evolve i think um working from home permanently is not going to help organizations so when it comes to uh, can technology really support i think so um because one you are able to do work much more uh, at a lower cost uh, uh, what 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 i'm coming from is for example testing in trucks uh, we actually can simulate and test different road conditions right we are able to uh, test certain parts uh, and and test to failure uh, and we can create these virtual environments so a lot of the times we are able to go to market a lot faster maintaining the same quality standards because technology has evolved and i think in the next 5 or 10 years this will exponentially increase because uh, whether you like it or not whether you innovate within your organization or not technology will evolve uh, and now technology is becoming redundant in about 15 to 18 months so if you do not see an roi where you invest in technology in less than 18 months then the technology is redundant yeah then a new technology comes and you will always be you know uh, two steps behind the eight ball so uh, I, i think for organizations uh, finding that right balance or reaching that equilibrium becomes very important when you talk about collaboration and technological enhancements using these cutting edge technologies i i love that right i just want to add you know you should to go to market much faster the global organizations which are better connected can actually borrow from innovations from across the world right it should not have to be a situation of not invented here and that's what global organizations really do very well and 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 yours are really good example chalakna right um uh, i mean there are innovations that are cutting across all markets and you're able to get them much faster test fail succeed whatever whichever way it is Uh, and that's something we must imbibe as a culture in innovation it's not about just being innovative it's about identifying which innovations from across the world really kind of suits your conditions very well and you can quickly uh, you know get that um, off the ground for yourself here in this pandemic people are really all virtual so we have to do idea generation is very very easy to do because now you are working with people around the globe and then then you can also do a design thinking which is very very critical and it is important how you do so you can create a framework you can use your cloud technologies to do a mvp and all but again in specific to the industry it varies a lot because in the manufacturing industry if you don't really manufacture a product and test it on a real road you cannot like you know even today so much technology is going on but how many of us are ready to be get operated by a bot without a doctor consent so there are limitations to the innovation depending upon the technology depending upon the sector 
but yes it can be expedited because we are all asking again going back to our medication or vaccine the clinical trials take minimum 10 years to do a vaccine or a medication but are we ready to wait till 10 years with this pandemic no right so we are all saying uh, when can i get a vaccine when can i get a vaccine so now people are going a little bit forward saying that okay if somebody is having a real problem maybe i can give a dose at least it will help them or not so you are doing on the fly clinical trials to the people when the drugs are coming in uh, you know before we close this session i just want to get some uh, quick closing remarks you now we have we have seen that uh, covid 19 has enabled technology and for us to sustain this in the longer run you know for us to win customers what could be some of the key things where organizations need to invest right what could be some of the areas you think we need to make further investments uh, which will help us sustain in the long term i i think the key is get us closer to the customer as you can whoever your customer is right mm -hmm. um, and and a customer first approach or or you start by by understanding the customer listening to the customer but also you need to upgrade your products to the customer's needs uh, and and this can only come from the voice of the customers we 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 believe that we have all the technology um, for example mm -hmm. uh, at our hands but implementing mm -hmm. that into a product and giving it maybe when the customer does not need it uh, is going to be a failure in the market so i, I think uh, the key here is listen to your customers get as close to the customers and as organizations you need to have the right tools how do you connect with the customers right is it apps is it is it feedback mechanisms what is it that you you have uh, it could be ai and and with all this data i think you can satisfy the customers a lot better in today's day and age than it was maybe even 10 years ago right uh, everybody talks about big data analytics and cloud computing i mean the amount of uh, you, you know insights you get to a customer also in terms of his or her preferences right purely by looking at the number of visits to your um, for example website how many customizations they do on a certain product etc gives you a lot of uh, input that you can take back to the customer validate and then put a product out into the market you know? so i uh, i think um, all in all when you look at it um, if you have the right equipment or the technology backing your industry or the business you are in to get closer to the customer then i think that's the key and then the last okay. portion is what something uh, that charulata touched upon it's after sales uh, you 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 first sell with the sales people but then you know the second sell is done by customer services or after sales so if you don't have continuous mechanisms to keep in touch with your customers and now that is a lot easier with the with the pandemic and then the way digitalization is evolving um then uh, you know you're going to lose out on these customers so maintaining this building trust as we spoke earlier and ensuring that the right tools are available uh, will definitely help i think in the long run many years ago also customer is always first but now predominantly today customer centric approach only will give you a better benefits but then as charulata also mentioned and jagan also commented the key is understand the customer give them the best experience for that you also need to understand your industry which the customer is in because sometimes customer is very focused on the industry but he may not really know how the technology can impact that industry so you need to be more like a solution architect in each of those areas even though it may not be your business you bring the technology into that business and then because it's always gives you if you are really following the new design thinking it's all about out of the box situation because the industry person may not may be thinking always the same thing so keeping the customer centric thinking out of the box because of the technology and then key is the engagement engagement right from the ideas how the customer is really thinking what is the problem how this industry can be helped then giving them what they need and then talking about the post sales are the continuous service because it is not one time sale once you do the sale then how do you really engage the customer throughout the process and also beyond so that we can really understand and help the customer to do because we believe in disruption in today's times the traditional methods of uh, research and survey and asking direct questions of how the customer feels etc is all is is not going to work right it's really got to be something about understanding from the sentiments they display understanding and reading the behavior of the customer right and and with all of the proliferation of digital and social media and multiple media that customers are going to be facing all the time uh, and content you know the explosion of content all the time they really you really need to understand that they are not waiting for you know one brand that they were at some point loyal to to stick to that anymore right it's it is 
multiple choices now in front of them which means we've got to stay honest we've got to be truthful we've got to keep engaging and we've got to keep looking at their behavior shifts and their needs and what is it the customer is really looking for be a little bit more predictive about it and um, and and create and innovate for those needs not because there is a portfolio expansion that you know is part of your business strategy right now right that's not going to work and there is a need in the market and it could be a service need as well i mean products more and more physical products are going into catering to service needs of consumers as well right and that's what we need to keep in mind it's not just about delivering the physical product needs that people have how do you service it after service how do you engage with them not when they have a problem but continuously engage with them to keep understanding them better and be better and for that data insights and action these would be the three things where you will have to base your innovations on and your next actions on uh, ladies and gentlemen uh, with this we have now come to the end of this session thank you for joining us for this session on business strategies to win customers during post covid 19 For more updates from CXO TV, please like and subscribe to our channel.